I love it. And I love what you all are putting here in the chat box about the gift. And, and so as we kind of enter this last um, session of content this week, we, we do have our guest speaker next week. One of the things that um, I just want to be continually thinking about is this idea of the gift and just what that means, what that looks like. And so one of the things I thought we'd start with uh, today is a moment of silence, just kind of letting the Holy Spirit be here with us and submitting our time and our agenda to that. And then I'll pray and then we'll go into a little bit of setup for the content. But most of the day today will be about discussion group and then the debrief out just what from the last section really struck you. We have one question this week. And then um, just overall, the past six weeks we've been journeying together, what's uh, been the gift of this time together. So that's where we're going. I'm gonna go ahead and put a minute on the timer here so that we can just invite the Holy Spirit into the space and then I will pray. Heavenly Father, Creator God, we just thank you for the gift of life today. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus the Messiah. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and in fact, being here with us today as we gather together in community and fellowship of the believers. We thank you for the gift of insight and wisdom and discernment and compassion and loyal love and your slow to angerness. We just continue to thank you for provision and for the grace that you pour out on us as we seek to pour out that same grace on others. We thank you for the gift of provision in the wilderness and the testing. And we just ask that you continue to protect us from the enemy and our own hearts in our own ways, and that you continue to allow us to allow, to align our wills and our hearts with what it is that you would have done here on earth as it is in heaven. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So returning the gift. Uh, just where are we? Uh, and one of the things, there's no new designs for today, no new drawings for today, but just a reminder that we started rooted in God's word. Um, we spent some time talking about a real understanding of science. We spent many weeks talking about this renegade posture towards dominant society. Uh, this idea of responding to the Kairos moments with the kingdom mentality. Uh, relationships that reflect allegiance to the kingdom of God, that's that up, in, and out. And then we've spent time talking about rhythms that honor God, abiding, pruning, growing, fruitfulness. Uh, and then we spent some time, last week Mitch came and talked to us about what it looks like to be a resident in the kingdom of God. What does it look like to take up space and place in, in time and in this age and the age to come? And so the last thought we're, we're leaving with is, what does it look like to return the gift of God to all creation? What does that look like for the people of God to return that gift? And so one of the things just in reading in, in the epilogue is this question that the author brings up that in the Potawatomi way, it is the honored who gives the gifts, who piles the blanket high to share good fortune with everyone in the circle. And the author closes with this thought that the moral covenant of reciprocity calls us to honor our responsibilities for all we have been given, for all that we have taken, right? So how do we live in that grace, that truth, and that influence? And so as we prepare to go into the breakout groups and talk about what it looks like to return the gift, I want to return to the scripture from a couple of weeks ago in John, John 15 specifically. So 
What I'm going to do is a slow reading of the scripture. And I just want you to hear the word of God and how it moves you, what the spirit is saying to you, what Jesus wants you to know about his relationship with you into creation. And so I'm just going to slow read John 15, 1 through 17. We got one last posture shift to make as a community, and then we'll go into our breakout groups. Uh, so the word of the Lord here found in John 15, starting in verse one. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must abide in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man abides in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words remain in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now abide in my love. If you obey my commands, you will abide in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and abide in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. And so that's the word of the Lord for the people of God. And the posture shift that we're inviting you into for this last session of content today is how do we move from a theology of personal salvation rooted in this Greek idea, this group concept, Greek concept of abandoning and escaping this material created world for some other space, and instead re in a theology or rediscover a theology of the gift of reconciliation at the cross for all creation, rooted in the concept that the kingdom of God will come to this earth as it is in heaven to transform it. And that reconciliation has already started, but has not yet culminated. So if that's the posture shift, if that's what Jesus is asking us in John 15 to do, to abide, then the question becomes, how are we called to return the gift? What is our fruit that will last? And so Grace is going to send us out into the breakout groups. You are welcome to talk about any of the parts in this last section we talked about or any of the other parts throughout the book that have struck you. Um, Grace, I have 1214 on my calendar, on my phone. So maybe at about 1245, we come back from discussion groups to kind of debrief a little bit, but the question for today is what does it look like for us to return the gift from God? What is that fruit that will last for us? 
All right, we are all back. I'm seeing that. I, I see something here in the chat box from Bob uh, that we might be able to get to. Looks like some important information there, so you might want to check that out. And then what I thought we'd do with our, we have some time. There was only one question. Well, um, I can't hear anyone, says Keith. Um, I don't know why you can, can I, I assume everyone else can hear me. I don't see my chat box blowing up. Um, we'll, we'll debrief a little bit. So I'm thinking we'll go in the order of Grace, Kim, Jessica, and then I'll kind of debrief some. So Grace, Kim, then Jessica, Grace. What are you all thinking about returning the gift? What's the gift? How do you return it? And what have you enjoyed about this book over this two months we've been together now? Yeah, we spoke largely about how the book has impacted us and how um, Christian conversation around creation care has impacted us. Um, one thing that I think our group, um, Kathy left our, gr our group a little bit early today, but we talked about how we admire her um, involvement in her community and how um, she brings a um, a creation care mindset to the work that she does, no matter what she's doing, um, and a loving Christ-like mindset. And so we talked a lot about how um, we well we how we admire that and how we want to be able to take that into other aspects of our life too, um, and um, kind of be the hands and feet a little bit more in that way. Um, we spoke about a lot of different things, but I think that was one of the more prominent um, takeaways. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Kim, what about your group? What are, what are you what are you all hearing from the Lord? What kind of came out of your conversation there? Um, we got off on a, a very fascinating tangent about um, how gifts are different to Americans than they are to the Native Americans. Um, and, and John mentioned a couple weeks ago that the term Indian giver comes because um, when you give something to somebody, you're giving it for them, but also for you to share. Um, and that's kind of very anti-American and anti-individualistic, but he talked a lot about um, just like how working as a community is really important to the Native Americans and how it should be to us as well. Um, and that focusing on reciprocity was a, a big theme. Um, and that we have like, our self-interest is um, bound in being part of a group and doing what's good for the group. If everybody does what's good for the group, it'll be better for everybody. And then um, I believe it was Angela at the last 20 seconds when the clock was counting down um, said that transformation takes all of us. So we really just talked a lot about community um, and and how gifts are very different in when you're living in a, a community that focuses on reciprocity than it does maybe in our American ways. That's great stuff. That, that's really good. And it looks like the chat box has a lot of good information going on in there too, other resources and reading. So apparently we're not the only one coming to this, these ideas at this time, which uh, that just seems to be how the Holy Spirit works. Uh, Jessica, what about you all? What, what was going on there? Sure. First, before I go into our discussion, I want to point out a, uh, a comment that one of our members, Bob Downs, put in the chat. His daughter actually works with Dr. Kimmer, and um, he has the inside knowledge that she will be giving a public talk on April 1st that is open for uh, anyone to attend. So um, just wanted to flag that. And if um, Grace, if you could capture this, um, would love to include that in our weekly, in our email out to make sure that everyone is able to take advantage of, of hearing from uh, uh, Dr. Kimmer. So thank you, Bob, for bringing this opportunity to us. Um, but yeah, we had a really great discussion, lots of, um, different, um, lots of rich stuff. So I'll try and distill it down. But one of our um, discussion points was um, even just in our view of nature and how we've lost the um, appreciation of it as a gift. One, because uh, taking more of a utilitarian instrumental view of nature of how does it provide for us instead of understanding its intrinsic value and um, losing it at an understanding of it as our common gift. And part of that has been um, our disconnection from the land and a loss of our understanding of our proper place as being stewards and God as the owner of, of the land that we are just tenants. 
And um, that, that when we lose that perspective of God as the owner, we then lose the perspective of him as the gift giver <laughs> and as the provider and how that's just so um, uh, critical just for our understanding and relationship with creation and our relationship with God. And um, if I can defer a little bit of my time, if we have time, so we got extra time, I'd also like to hand the mic over to Dave McCullough, who had a really, really great revelation this morning um, uh, during his devotion time about creation as a mutual gift, not just Yeah, to add, more of that, Lord. What, what do you have for us? What's the word of the Lord? <laughs> Well, it was a, it was a revelation to me that the earth uh, was not given us to simply use, but uh, <clears throat> that it was intended to be a mutual gift. Uh, not only is the earth a gift to us, but we're a gift to the world. And therefore, we have a responsibility um, to care. But it was also a question in my mind as to why Jesus did not address this issue more directly and it occurred to me that he that he used the the symbolism of the vineyard so often uh vineyard was a favorite place for him to be it's where he often met with his his disciples and a vineyard is a perfect example of mutuality where uh of course without the earth we couldn't have a vineyard but without man or human being, uh, the vineyard couldn't exist as it is. Uh, it, 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 each must serve the other. And no wonder Jesus used the vineyard as a part of his parables uh, on several occasions. Um, it was the perfect analogy for uh, what we're talking about uh, this last month. Uh, I just wish that somewhere along the line in the 50 years I was a pastor, I would have thought to preach on that, to take that, that idea and go with it. And now that nobody wants me to preach anymore, <laughs> I finally find this revelation. But uh, uh, if I ever do get another opportunity, I, I know what my text is going to be. <laughs> so. There you go. Well, that's good. And yeah, we were just reading about a vineyard here today. And yeah, Jesus oftentimes pulling from the prophets and that imagery of the vineyard and, and the wine press and, and the idea that uh, it, it is important. So that's good. I, I think for, for our group, um, we hit on a lot of the themes that the rest of you all hit on. Um, really, this idea that gratitude is a big piece of the puzzle, the way the author is able to write about creation and her natural environment we think or discern came about from this ability to be grateful and in, in the posture of gratitude um this idea of choosing joy over despair um even when we're mourning in creation and, and the loss of creation and this is interesting um idea that we started to develop about lowering the walls and the way that she's writing you know, sometimes we can create these walls of order and categories in our current culture um, that literally trap us into this idea that I live within four walls, a roof and a, and a floor. And so I'm disassociated from creation. I'm not in creation anymore. I'm living under fluorescent lights, I think is the, the wording that was used. And we started talking more about why we're trapped in that way of thinking having come from a Eurocentric perspective, a Reformation perspective, a post-enlightenment perspective, a Hellenistic perspective of kind of this duality between the material world and the spiritual world. And it's so helpful to read indigenous wisdom or read someone that's not trapped in that stream with us that can look at the world in a different way and speak about it in a poetic way, in a less mechanical way, because um, what we started to talk about is that that's how Jesus talks about the world. That's how he talks about the kingdom. And then we spent some time talking about small acts in the kingdom, picking up litter, picking up trash. In the kind of a West view of the world, me picking up one bottle doesn't impact the greater good of the world. But once someone was sharing a story that he was on a walk with someone and they did this and it just really struck him. And we talked about how that one story might've 
like that act of picking up that bottle might not have meant a lot to that person, but it meant a lot to Richard and Richard then shared it to the three of us. And now we're all talking about it. I'm sharing it with 21 of you all. That's how the kingdom of God works, right? Small acts magnified out into creation. And so we kind of ended our time talking about what it would look like to maybe not having another read through Ephesians on Wednesday nights in a small group, but we like go out into creation as a small group and, and care for our neighborhood or clean up our creek. And so that's kind of where we landed the plane. It was a really good conversation. And I just want to um, say that I have thoroughly enjoyed this. I have learned more from you all in this book than um, I have given to you. I, I really want to say that, like I'm learning more from you all than I'm giving and teaching. Um, we're done with the content for this portion. A reminder though, that the whole point of this book club is one that we be in community together, learn from each other, get to see that there are Christians around the world talking about this stuff. You're not the only one, but then equipping you to go do this in your environment, in your context. And so the slides we provide, the um, discussion guides we provide, the video recordings, that is there so that you can go back later and do this with someone else and innovate, do it better than me. Please do it better than me. Um, please do that. And then also next week, we're going to bring you a special guest to talk about this um, because as hard as I tried, as much as I tried to honor the text and the context, um, ultimately, you know, I'm an American black dude in the South. I, I am not an indigenous person and I have not lived these ways. And so we wanted to bring you someone that is of this culture that is a believer that can speak to us in an even deeper way. So I am really encouraging you to come back next week if you have the margin for that last week. I think it will be the best of the weeks uh, having talked to James already. And so um, the next thing we have, I'm gonna pray us out and, and stay for a couple minutes if anyone wants to talk a little bit more. I'm also gonna talk a little bit more about the partners program in our bonus time. So if you've been interested in that, I've emailed with some of you already. Um, we can talk more. I can answer some questions and um, frequently asked questions there. And then book club is coming back. We, we are not done for the year. There will be another session later this year. You're going to get a feedback form from Grace within the next week or so. Please fill out the feedback form. Tell us what you thought, what we can do, what worked, what needs clarity, what's missing, what's broken, and then recommend a book to us because this book came out of last session's um, recommendation. So we are always looking for recommendations. That matters. Um, so that's coming back. Partners program is coming up. We have another special event possibly happening in April. So I'll be sure to let you know about that soon. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pray us out, soft release us. If you want to stick around, great. Otherwise, I'll see you next Friday and we'll have our special guest speaker. Whew, that's a lot. Uh, Heavenly Father, that's a lot. This was a lot. This was a lot of weeks together. This was a lot of reading together. This was a lot of new perspective, but we honor you. We are grateful to you for the provision. We're grateful for community of believers that have taken the time out of their day to meet with one another and reflect on your word, to meditate on your word day and night. Uh, you tell us in Psalm 1 that that is how we become a tree of life. And that tree of life sustains us through these seasons of despair. And so I'm just thankful for my brothers and sisters that have joined us. I'm thankful for this writing, which you've used as both a picture, a mirror, and a window into how I live my own life and how I can live life better, more abundantly in the kingdom of God with my brothers and sisters here. So as my friends go out into their weekend, I hope that they enjoy rest, that they Sabbath, and rest however that looks like for them and that they engage in your word and engage with your people um, throughout the rest of the weekend. We do all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, take care. Bye, everyone. David McCullough, did you get my chat? <laughs>